Coming up on AwesomeCast, we look at some weird iDevice cases, the most notable iCloud hack yet, and what you should be doing to protect yourself. And while jocks are the most watched at the Olympics, geeks are winning in space. Awesome cast. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 113. I'm Mike Sorg here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. We got people from all over with me on the couch as usual is where's the button where's i put the button chachi of insert coin to begin.com you came back oh you came back where is that echo at i don't understand all right uh yeah hey hi chach hi how are you all right good all right. i am glad to be here on the couch thank you for inviting me and coming at us uh back again wow you just ignore I, i'm moving on i'm moving wow. on wow i'm just saying just, just, you're good. You're Fine. good. Fine. Also, uh, join us from here in the greater Pittsburgh area. He turned around. Where'd he, where'd he go? <laughs> oh, it's the back of his head. It's Frank oh, Chino dr- with... Dramatic turnaround. ...of insertcoinandbegin.com <laughs> doing the uh, the evil Bond villain uh, entrance today. How he you doing? He needs a cat. Uh, I'm, I'm doing okay. Actually, we used to have a cat, but... Um, you ate it. No. Um, actually, it did involve some eating of some raw meat and some puking into a skillet of hamburgers. And we don't have a cat anymore. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, well, what happened was the cat ate raw meat, and then it puked in the skillet, so Frank said, fuck you for ruining my hamburgers, let's go. <laughs> and it's no longer a family show. Oh, and definitely not, because with us from, I don't oh, even know where you're at, I'm sorry. is Bo, wait, wrong show, AJ Koftik. IT dude. Hello. <laughs> Virtualpotholes.com. <laughs> I can see nothing. But you guys can see me. Yes. That's good. I am uh, currently coming to you from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful town. And if, you've, uh, uh, you if you read some of my tweets, you'll see that I have been very happy with the food here. Oh. Mostly involving um, ribs and fried chicken. Excellent. Yeah, I hate you for that rib place you found. Also, we all need to come down there and do awesome cast from North Carolina or South Carolina, whichever Carolina you're in. I think he's mostly in the North Carolina, and we might have just lost him. Well, there he is. I was sad. North one, it's always listen. It is always the North one, unless I tell you I'm in the South one, which will be at some point. But it's always (laughs) the North one. Okay. Well, we're gonna do awesome cast from the North one so that we can go get ribs with you. You have to do it. You have to be there before five. They're only lunch. We'll make this happen. We'll make yeah. this happen. They, could, they didn't trip. have the cheer wine barbecue, which made me sad today. So I got brown sugar dry rub again, and they were still tasty. <laughs> I get hungry every time you tweet your lunch. Yeah, yeah seriously. Me too. Well, I I try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been having some very delicious lunches, and uh, tomorrow will likely be no different. Excellent, excellent. Hey, and this is the awesome cast. Uh, you can drop us a line. We're at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com or tweet us at awesomecast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus. Join us. Join the conversation. Tag this episode uh, hashtag AC113 if you want to talk about anything specifically that happens on this episode. And uh, let's get right into it. We had, well, first, once again, Frank sends us so much stuff during the week. So I don't. I didn't even think I sent you anything this week. You sent me like three things last Wednesday. Well, okay. see, the thing is, I can explain it. Okay. We're never sure what Rob is doing. No, we don't. Yeah. And you line up guests so that you just don't have to talk to me and Rob every week. Yes. Because their chances are we're going to tell you you're wrong or we're going to yell at you in some way, shape, or form. So you bring someone in. Thanks for defining that. So you bring someone in to balance it out. Yes. So Frank's never sure whether or not he's going to be on the show. Nope. And he listens nope. anyway, so he contributes. This is why I'm on the show today, too. Exactly. 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 So that's why we always get stuff from Frank, and Frank's always there. All right, Frank, you sent us a few things, uh, a few more. Uh, uh, you're, you're really good about finding covers. Uh, okay, which ones did I send you? Stuff. All right, here we go. Um, first, we have... Um, <laughs> The SBY QVC show? The yes. SBI Wood iPad 3 cover. Yes, because that is convenient in so many ways. 
<laughs> now, now, for those that are not on video, this is like a, a curvy wood iPad cover. Yeah. And yes, it is wood. Not not some plastic. It looks like a, a really bad picture frame. Top. That is wood. It does look nice like a really stand. bad picture frame. And this is on custommade.com. I, I presume this is like an Etsy or something. I don't know. I was disgusted by that and left immediately. After sending it to you, of course. <laughs> uh, you're Somebody coming. else needs to be disgusted by this. And <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, it does zero. And uh, then there's zero. another one you sent us. Uh, zero here. said it looks heavy. It does look heavy. Yeah. <laughs> that well, li- that, that's the thing. That's what I put in the in the um, in the email. The iPad is made to be convenient to carry around. Yeah. That is neither light nor easy to hold. Nor sizable to fit in any average kind of bag of and, any sort. And again, how many iPad cases though, like really take away from the sleekness? You know, I have this. Um, Everything. I, Every one of I them. I mean, I actually. Have this, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I have this uh, Marware one that I saw like one time on on uh, you know like MacBook Weekly or something, and I, I like it. I really like it, but it's really kind of well worn, and it really adds a whole lot to the thickness. Again, as an it, iPad it triples, one, but still. It tri- it, almost triples the size of your iPad. It does. It does. Like, sometimes I take it out to just recall, like, oh, that's what it's supposed to feel like, you know? And again, with the, the, the phone, I almost never have it out of the case, except for this one doesn't have pl- ports on it. Um, and, and same thing, I'm looking at trying to get a Mophie case maybe in the next couple months, which adds, adds even more bulk to this thing. Well, so. yeah, it's it's because it's the extra battery. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what happened to my phone. It doubled in weight because I got the extended battery. Well, yeah, battery. and yours, yours kind of juts out, too, yeah. the, the way the way yours is. Actually, the jutting... Here's the thing, though. That serves a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the jutting, I don't mind because it actually helps the phone fit better in my hand. Okay, okay. It adds a little bit of heft to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So, and it's not, a, it's not a terribly small or thin phone. You have the G2, yeah, the T-Mobile G2 yeah, still, so... I mean, it doubles the the width and the the weight of the phone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which that I sounds like it. the worst thing ever. Yeah, and but I, every time I've ever bought an iPhone case, and I've bought a lot of them in my time, um, I'm always looking for something thin and something that that will still protect my device. Yeah, but I don't have to charge my phone for like sixteen hours. <laughs> Is this? I see people who buy like the life proof case, and it's like this. I saw somebody, he bought, he paid like $70 for it, and it's effectively like your phone is now indestructible and waterproof and all sorts of crap. Are we talking about the uh, the Pittsburgh one? No. No, there's a few of these. Okay. This one literally has you, like, you put it together, and then you actually sink it into water to make sure that it's watertight, yeah. and then you put your phone in it. I actually find it, found it. It's over at, uh, I think that's lifeproof.com. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the weird part is, is that in order to plug in the headphones, you have to unscrew a cap. Somebody had this. I'm out. Like I, I swear, somebody showed me this at uh, like out somewhere. Um, yeah, this thing. And this every, thing's serious. Every time I see somebody, ha- anytime I see somebody using it, I just wonder, like, are you like really adventurous or are you just really clumsy? Yeah, I'm going with clumsy. And, and I am, and that's why I spent the you know hundred dollars for the plan, the Apple Care Plus plan, and uh, right. it, you know, and I know you know. Okay, I just made a mistake. I got it caught in the rain. I got soaked. My iPhone's dead. Um, I I drop fifty bucks and I get a new one. You know, I, I accept that as my my oops clause. You know what I mean? You know, if you do that, you should only pay for that after the first year. If like, you wait, if you buy it immediately day one, you pay a hundred bucks day one. Does it cover you for two years? It covers for two years, yeah. And it doesn't matter. It's like the okay. other Apple Cares. It, it, it's it just adds on to your original warranty. So it's regardless. It's going to be two years from when you bought the thing. Well, see, I okay. pay. So I that's pay. what I'm saying. The first year, you have hardware covers that allows you to buy the phone again for like. I actually had my iPhone four, and the home and the home button broke. Mm-hmm. And I took it into Apple, and I'm like, this doesn't work anymore. This kind of sucks. What can I do? And they said, oh, um, let me check your upgrade. And the 4S had just come out. He's like, well, let me check and see if uh, you qualify for an upgrade. And he's like, well, you do. And he's like, or if you don't want to buy a brand new 4S, which that was dumb to say to me. Um, 
it was like you could pay a hundred dollars for the 16 gig or 150 to replace in kind because i had the 32 gig and i just went and bought a 16 gig iphone 4s hmm. um but yeah they they did that after almost i mean it was over a year because it was when the 4s came out and i bought the iphone 4 day one yeah yeah so i don't and i didn't buy any extra apple care or anything like that huh. um i wanted I, i'm tempted so I keep seeing the iPhone 5 rumors, and, I'm, and, I'll, and I'll be very honest. I am incredibly happy with my Galaxy Nexus mm-hmm. that I don't know if I'll go to the 5, because I would actually, even though it's getting a bigger screen, it would still be smaller, because it's a 4.65 or some yeah, ridiculousness. And that by, by the way, I have to keep it on my lap, because I have score alerts turned on for the Pirates game tonight, and I didn't, I've never had them turned on before. I just turned them on yesterday. And I was scared to death because I thought my phone was ringing. And it turns out it just has a really long vibrate function when a score happens. <laughs> <laughs> scared the devil out of me. What were you, um, what were you saying, Frank? Yeah. They, oh. Oh, no. It, it is 4.65 inches, and it's a curved screen, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only slightly yeah. curved. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but it's... I, I, I don't ever notice the fact that it is curved. Um but I, I'll say this. I actually was reading an article the other day about Android apps. And there was a guy who was, re- he was reviewing the Nexus 7 tablet. And he said, you know, I've seen a lot of reviews that say, you know, this is a good tablet if you don't want to pay for an iPad. And he said, it actually got me thinking of something. This, the uh, Nexus 7 doesn't compete with the iPad. It competes with the iPhone. Mm-hmm. He said, because I've given up so much screen real estate from a, from a 10-inch screen down to a 7-inch screen that now... I didn't really gain so much portability wise because the iPad is so thin, like we were talking about with this goofy cover. Mm. That he's like, I don't. He's like, I gave up a lot of portability, and I haven't really gained much. He's like, the seven inch is kind of nice to hold when you're reading a book or something, but other than that, it's still kind of a bulky device because it's kind of thick. And he's like, I haven't really gained anything. He's like, but what it pro, it, what it proved to me is that, hey, I would kind of like an iPhone that was seven inches. Hone that, like, up, hone that up not, to your head? No, he was like, I would kind of like it if the iPhone were bigger. Like yeah. if the iPhone had a four or five inch screen. He was like, that That proved to me that the iPhone would do better at a, at a bigger resolution than the iPad coming down. Hmm. He said it was a much different thing than he went into. Um, and I didn't want to hijack a iPad cover story with that. Um, <laughs> that's fine that's fine let's touch on this other one real quick that uh, frank sent us here uh this one is the uh i'm presuming this is this is mosey mh uh, i'm sorry m-o-h-z-y and it's actually a portable handheld projector for your iphone that you just stick in there and uh this could be handy uh but yeah. i don't know for 250 bucks and it does come with an extra battery that that's the thing it it looks really nice and it'd be great for um you know adding on to to uh, presentations or mm-hmm. just to a mutual friends or whatever, but the, I don't know. The price is just a little steep for that because you're you're almost paying for a second phone with that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and, and, I, and I'm wondering functionality because you're you're holding this phone and and, and trying to uh, push it and everything. Um, I don't know how functional that's going to be. You know? That's true. Yeah, I didn't think about. I that. mean, am I going to sit it somewhere and then just go and swipe it like sitting on a table? You know, I, I just see a lot of kind of logistical problems with this. It'd be kind of a cool feature to have. Just pull it up and be like, oh, here we go. Um, but, yeah, I just don't know how functional that can be. I think that that device, and I've seen other devices like it, funny enough, in a SkyMall magazine. Uh, <laughs> it does feel very SkyMall. It's yeah. SkyMall, yeah, let's yeah. be honest. Um, I've seen other devices like it, and I've had the same, I've had the same reply. What is this device really doing for me? Is it doing anything good? Mm-hmm. Is it doing anything that I needed to do? Is it something cute, or is this, or should I have an actual laptop with an actual tiny projector? Because they make small projectors for laptops. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they don't, yeah. they don't plug into the laptop, but they are, uh, you know, something small that can fit into like my laptop bag, which I'll admit is uh, kind of beat up and filled with garbage, but. Um, like it would fit in that, and I have my laptop and my projector, and then I can go on the road and basically do what I need to do. Um, 
I'm not entirely certain that this serves any real purpose for anything other than like, oh, hey, let me show a movie on my tiny projector. Hey, great for restroom breaks. Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch <laughs> movies on the bath, the back of the stall door. <laughs> That sounds awesome. <laughs> That's great. Hey, from the chat room, Juggalo John says he, he could see, uh, he, he works at a place with hard concrete floors, and if he had an iPod, he wouldn't want he would want the kind of protection we were talking about earlier with uh, that life-proof case I think you were talking about. Um, us, well, I know, like Rob, here on the show, he, his old job, he was around a lot of dusty environments. Um, so he, he, like, he'd had problem with you know, getting dust in the home screen and stuff, and I could see him going for potentially something like that. The people um, I had, the people that I know who had them had uh, office jobs in cubicles with carpet floors. Calm yourself. <laughs> like, there are some people who don't need it, but they have it because they're genuinely clumsy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's really what it comes down to. Yep. All right, Frank, uh, this, uh, this uh, might be more up your... Uh, explain to me what's going on here. You, you, you uh, submitted one here about... Uh, the House of Representatives considering a bill to stamp out patent trolls? Yeah. Um, apparently, they're just, they're trying to step into uh, just, well, exactly what it says. Stop patent trolls. The people who just happen to buy the claim to a patent or whatever, and then they see that someone's doing something, so they try to get their cut and try to uh, go that way rather than playing a lottery ticket. Uh, pretty much just trying to stop them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is this is. I, I try not to get into it much on this show because I'm sick of hearing it everywhere. Uh, yeah. My daily tech shows, it's like, oh, what's going on in the latest case now? What's going on with this? You know, uh, it, it, these guys are suing each other, and it's like, uh, it, it, it just gets kind of ugly. So, um, but I think it, it I does, think, but this this uh, bill also would come back not just at patent trolls. Mm -hmm. It would also come back at companies. He's oh. like this giant stoop out of okay. like, it. There he is. That's really what we're coming back to. Right. Um, Say that again. We, we, we you glitched out on us for a second there. I, I think this, uh, this, this bill is really just, I mean, yes, it goes after patent trolls, but I would like to see this go back to software patents in general. And say, or so even even hardware patents, see the Apple and Samsung case, where, oh, you're doing something that we do. Oh, you're doing something that we do. Sue, 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 sue. Everybody loses. Mm -hmm. It's dumb. And it wastes time, wastes everybody's energies when both of them could be moving forward on things. And I fully believe they both are. But let's be really honest here. All of the flash memory inside your iPhone, that's Samsung. So let's screen. be really honest. These guys aren't really going after each other as hard as they could. If Samsung really wanted to, they could just say, "All right, you know what? You're in breach of contract because you're suing. Uh, you're we're in litigation against you for patents. We're going to cut your supply to flash memory. All they have to do is cut that. Yeah, yeah. And, and they would. They would get it. They would get away with it. They could. And Apple would be forced to go find another flash memory supplier. And all Apple, and but the reason they don't do it is because number one, um, Apple is Samsung's biggest flash memory customer, so they kind of cancel each other out. Like Samsung could cut them off, and but Samsung would be cutting off their nose despite their face. It wouldn't really work out in the end for them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, it, there's definitely a problem when it comes to patents. I mean, as much as we're hearing about it, and these guys like collecting patents that are like companies that are basically. Getting by on 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 trying to sue people and and, and and get money for stuff they didn't do, you know. Yeah. Um. So I am. I, it's good that this is actually going through. Something, some sort of litigations. They're trying to fix it, uh, but seeing how you know how well these things have gone for, uh, you know, tech related issues in in Congress and everything before in lawmaking, I I can't expect it going through without like cutting somebody off at the knees. So somebody's not going to be happy about this, uh, particularly right. those people that are like making money off of all those patents. So, um, so moving on, I want to uh, I want to I, I want to move up to this one here, guys. Um, there was a big story that came up over the weekend. Um, Matt Honan, 
I believe his mm -hmm. name is, uh, from Wired Magazine. Uh, now, I, I first caught wind of this uh, watching This Week in Tech. They actually had him on to explain uh, what had happened. Uh, basically, uh, s somebody uh, hacked into his account, and it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a brute force or anything. They actually social engineered, called Apple support, got uh, his password for his iCloud support, managed to wipe his iPhone, iPad, and MacBook Air, mm -hmm. amongst other things. Apparently, their target was they were trying to get into the Gizmodo. Was it G Gizmodo he belonged to? Yes. Yeah. Uh, his, the, yep. his Gizmodo uh, Twitter account, which uh, he had had linked through, um, lost everything on his computer. He one that he admittedly didn't back up uh, uh, recently, of course. Um, so this is raising a lot of questions about security in the cloud. And, well, first of all, I, I got to believe this isn't a cloud question. It's a more of a uh, password security uh, and maybe even social engineering question. Because uh, uh, on top of that, they also managed to get, uh, I, I believe they got to his Apple account uh, by by calling Amazon support to get the last four digits of his credit card, which he used the, the, which they used to prove that they were supposedly the person to get his password out of Apple support. So this, kids, is something that has been going on forever. It's called social engineering, or the much more layman term for social engineering is called lying. Actually, it's reverse social engineering. Is this reverse social engineering? Yeah. <clears throat> because yeah. in order in order to... Uh, believe it or not, a lot of hackers get really high-paying jobs mm -hmm. Yes. for figuring out holes in systems. Yeah, absolutely. And the way mm -hmm. they do this is they start with the end product and they work their way to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's reverse social engineering because you're taking the finished product and then reducing it back to the beginning when it had all the holes and everything which was security measures right is, right. The, is the front end so it's it's technically reverse engineering it's a genius thing to do which is why these people and i, I was going to say guys but it's not just guys anymore mm -hmm. i mean, I mean these people they make a metric crap ton of money from these huge companies just throwing sacks of dollar bills at them saying, see if you can get in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In in this case, social engineering, for those who didn't know, it's just lying. <laughs> and, the, I mean, they call Amazon and they said, hey, hi, I'm Matt Honan, and I have uh, I bought something, but I'm not sure uh, what account that I purchased it with. Can you tell me the last four digits of the credit card that I used to purchase this? Certainly, Mr. Honan. Uh, the last four digits of the credit card you used were 4922. Thank you. They call Apple and they say, hey, um, I seem to have uh, forgotten my iCloud password. I can't remember what it is. I think my wife changed it. Can you reset my password for me? Certainly, Mr. Honan. Uh, for, to verify your identity, can you please give me the last four digits of your credit card number? Uh, yes, 4922. Thank you. What would you like your password reset to? Ta-da, he's in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, number one, I'm going to make a plug here. We're not getting paid for this. Please, back <laughs> up your computer. For the love of God, don't do it to iCloud. Yeah, yeah. Back up your stuff, especially if you have pictures of your family that you find dear. <laughs> Which were one thing that this guy that th this guy lost. Well, right. that, that, like one thing he says, I, I really hope I can get back are, are the pictures of my family, of my kids. Because right. he, has, he has a young, young son or something. Um, which is understandable, you know. I right. mean, well, we had we had the issue uh, a couple months. I think we may have talked about it in this program where the guy is suing Apple because because he put all of his pictures on a time machine and it died. You know, so I mean, that's it's more than that, guys. You know, you right. got to get it more hey, than one place. One one simple thing: go into your Google Plus profile, turn on that instant upload feature. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For exactly. those of you who are using Google Plus. Backblaze.com, crashplan.com. Exactly. Exactly. Get yourself a Drobo. Uh, the time machine works just fine. I actually just did a full restore. And when I say full restore, I mean I had nothing on my hard drive. Mm -hmm. Did a full restore of my entire OS and all of my documents and everything from a time machine backup. It but, works. But you have it like a second a place, not just on your time machine as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I have it. I, go, I have a local backup to my time machine. I also have a remote backup to backblaze.com. $5 a month. Mm -hmm. Go sign mm -hmm. up. It's cheap and easy. And I, when I say easy, I mean you install the client and click 
back up. It's exactly Ta-da. It, it, it's Crash a three-step process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have two on-sites and one off-site mm-hmm. right. at all times. Mm-hmm. Fail mm-hmm. saves mm-hmm. here at a minimum. At a minimum, yes. Buy yourself a yeah. NAS. It costs one hundred and fifty dollars. If you don't want to spend that kind of money, oh, your data can be lost. What's, what's That's a NAS? how much your data is worth. Now, what's a NAS for the uninitiated? That would be a network attached storage device. Okay. Uh, Drobo makes a, a wonderful product. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You also have uh, Drobo, who's a, a sponsor of ours at one point. Um, uh, also, yeah, really. you could get an Apple Time machine. Oh. Uh, works with Windows and Macs. You could also get yourself a uh, just a regular uh, USB hard drive. Yes, it, that's, that's how easy simple. it is nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah USB hard drive. Plug it in, comes off. with software to do it. Get yeah. a passport and hit back up my stuff. Yeah, they all they all come with that software that I end up deleting as soon as I get one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so. you don't even have to, I mean, once a month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get the drive out, hit back up my stuff. And then throw it in a drawer. And say, what I do is I try to move all my projects as soon as I'm done with them over to the Drobo. So there, it's duplicated across a few drives uh, in case something fails. It's really nice for that. And it's it's on Backblaze. And Backblaze is nice because there's no limits to it. I have terabytes up there right at this point. Yep. And they're, they're trying I have, to... I have 350, 350 gigs of literally random crap. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. what that 350 gigs is because I, I don't know what it is. I, I we actually actually with the client uh, they she went to uh, she was backing stuff up because they were, she was told there she's got like a year old Mac Air and um, and it, it was it was kind of slow so they they reformatted it and took all the stuff off and it was all of her files that we transferred over from an even older iMac uh, the the uh, 2006 white iMac uh, to this thing so so they I guess the the, the Mac genius uh, uh, brought it over to one of those uh, uh, Seagate pat not the passports but one of the bigger uh, Seagate free agent drives and uh, and about a month later she hadn't gone through it hadn't gone through it I came in and uh, to, to help her out and uh, we found that the drive was failed all of all her stuff for of, years all of her things old, are gone and then, and she's it, it, old scripts old videos old 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 stuff for. Uh, uh, for for news stories she worked on, it, it just just gone. Thankfully, it's recovered, but there's no file names for anything. You just have Word doc one, Word doc two, Word doc three, Word doc four. I did that with a failed uh, one terabyte drive mm-hmm. uh, that I got enough of the file structure of to figure out that this folder of things needs to come back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I grabbed that folder and I grabbed a number of things and dumped them all off and got enough of my data back. The rest of it, I was like, okay, listen, I haven't touched this stuff in six years. I don't need it anymore. Exactly. It exactly. I mean, as it is, it's, it's a scary proposition. I, I it, It's going to take forever to back up, but we have stacks of drives of video from, from a trip to China that we're hoping to do a documentary with. And it's, let's get this. I'm signing you up for Backblaze. It's going to take a month or two to back all this up, but at least that'll happen. You know? Right. Or at a bare minimum, you grab a, at least a second drive and dump it off and put it somewhere else. Yeah. They, it, well, it's just, it's just, it's just far too much stuff. There, there's literally like so, eight one terabyte drives full of video. So, so it's that's too that's much of step, a bulk. That's step one. Exactly. Back up your stuff. Yeah. Number two, the situation here that everybody is jumping on is in, in, in the article. By the way, let's let's take one giant step. I want to take a step back here. He, Matt Honan, comes out and says that it was his fault. Yeah. That his accounts were chained together, that he, you know, that his accounts were chained together, that he didn't back up any of his stuff. He recognizes that that is his fault. So let's take that for what it is worth, which is he's admitting his fault. Number two, Amazon gave them the credit card number, which they are like, oh, yeah, last four digits of a credit card. What can you do with that? Nothing. Meanwhile, Apple uses that as the verification. Mm -hmm. So those are two different levels of security that people are viewing. You could take this to the nth degree and everybody – the problem is that if if you take it to the nth degree, how far do you go? Do you have an RSA key, which for those of you who don't know, who haven't worked in like a giant office, is this tiny little, uh, like it looks like a USB keychain type of thing, but it has a set of six numbers on it that's constantly being generated off of an algorithm. 
that the RSA server, which is at your home, or which is at your office, uses to verify that you are who you say you are. And it knows, the computer knows, that your key is going to calculate this number at this time and thus gets in that way. It matches up and it says, oh, okay, you typed in 638268 and now you can get in. Um, those are the sorts of things that, are, that exist. But the problem is, is that does Apple hand that out? Does Amazon hand that out? If you went with some overarching scheme that said, okay, everybody needs to get on board with some sort of online verification system, the problem is, is that if you got into that, you have access to everything it's This in the same manner that this happens. And you have to like, you basically have to constantly watch each other's backs until you're in a giant circle of mistrust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. And, and, he linked all his stuff together. And he even said, he, you know, had he used Google, uh, had he used Google two-factor authentication, which I do and which many of you should use, uh, it's a very simple thing to turn on. And what it does is it sends a text message to your phone when you sign into something that you haven't signed into before. And you get a number that it's, a, again, like a six-digit code. You type in that code. It verifies you are who you say you are. And then you're allowed to use your services. Hell, even, or, the, even, see, even the Steam account. Anytime I log in on a browser to my Steam account, which is my video game, you know, kind of repository, you know, I, I, I have say, hey, we sent you an email. You got to use a code. They, they automatically turn that on. Right. Well, see, I, I tried Google two step authentication and it jacked my phone up. OK. Yeah. Yeah. You, I remember you had uh, problems with this a couple. What, yeah, what happened? It wouldn't. I couldn't sign into anything despite going through their entire process. Now, is this because now, now the other thing they have, there's two things here. There is the two-step authentication, and they also have application-specific passwords, which I use extensively. Mm -hmm. So I have a password for my Google account that I have, let's see, mail, uh, Adium, um, Fantastical, uh, Google Drive. Um, that's five things I can name on my laptop screen right now that uses an application-specific password to log in to Google, which is a completely separate password between applications. So and it's just literally just a just stretch of letters. It's a 16-letter password that doesn't make any sense. There's no pattern to it. I've never found a si – the password has never been the same twice. Um, the, even the sets of four have not been the same twice. Um, and it's used to basically say, okay, if somebody guesses your password for one of these applications, it's not going to affect your access to other applications, mm -hmm. short of them using it to get in. And you can't sign into Google's website via an application-specific password. Um, it, it was just generally interesting uh, to, to turn that on and really like dig through Google's security things. And I'll be honest, it's a wildly huge pain to do that. Wildly huge. However, um, once you're in and you're used to it, your stuff is inherently more secure because that person is going to send. The only thing they could have done is use two-factor authentication to send an email to that account, or to the email account. But you have to get in first. So it's just kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a, a circle of things. And there's no, like, I don't, I don't know how I can fault it. Apple believed that the, the, the credit card number, the partial credit card number, which is the last four digits, was secure enough to guarantee to guarantee verification. But from Amazon's standpoint, they're like, mm, we're not going to let you in, but we will tell you what the last four digits of the credit card were, because that's that's just something that they view as an unimportant piece of information. I mean, there's but, but if you get enough, you just if you get enough pieces of unimportant important information you get the last four digits of the social security you get the last four digits of of, of of you know the credit card number you know what what else is there you know i i mean i, I think the social security number is like the easiest thing to get anymore and because you, you're sticking it into everything that you sign up for but it's just i, I i'm like when reading his story i think they I mean, I'm reading this whole story, and they have just... 
it's like he's mad at Apple and Amazon. And be, and the other thing is, some people were like, "Oh, this is what they'll do for somebody who has a blo- who has is a writer on a blog, but they won't do this for Joe Schmo." Mm-hmm. Well, let's also think about this. He can ring the alarm far louder than Joe Schmo can. Yeah, yeah. Joe I, I, Chachi, if your stuff got broken into, you would be able to unite a, a, a small army. <laughs> if I did it, no one would care. I would be very mad with somebody in a call center for Apple. Well, That's about. It, it, you're right. I would be able to amass a small army, um, but I've seen you get angry with companies to the point where you get what you want. Mm-hmm. So while it would take you a little bit longer to do it, it you always get what you want. It's, it's as far the as problem like is that what he did. Yeah. Is if I were in a call center, I could get mad and scream up the chain of, of command in a, in this call center and get right. to eventually somebody who could help me. The problem is, is I'd have to scream and bitch my way up there. Yeah. This guy says, I got hacked. I'm going to write this story. He causes a PR mess for Apple and Amazon. They now Apple now has to clean this up and explain to all of their customers how this happened. Now let's be honest, Matt Honan, a writer for Gizmodo, is a little bit higher profile target than me. Mm-hmm. However, that's not to say that it doesn't happen. Because what Apple has, and they tout this thing all the time. You know that iTunes registry that they have? And they tout this all the time. They have this giant Store. We have so have like many credit cards. Four hundred million credit cards. Yeah, on file, including mine, including yours, Sorg, yep. including yours, Chachi. Yep, mine too. Yep, mine too. <laughs> all four. All four of us have credit cards on file with Apple. All. If a hacker got in and got that, everybody would need a new credit card that day. Mm-hmm. I would immediately. I mean, I would have my. I have. I have two credit cards. What they have is one of. I would all, I would be able to use my second one because that's not touching Apple. Mm-hmm. It's just I don't use it in that manner. But that's what they would have. I, I'm screwed. And by the way, this goes for you too, Google, because you're gaining popularity with your Google Wallet service because I'm now able to link my credit card to you, and you just uh, happen to do that for me when I updated Google Wallet on my phone. Jerks. <laughs> Wasn't a real big fan of that. If you if you have ever bought anything, and by the way, I when you buy uh, the the Google Nexus through the Play Store, it automatically links your uh, credit card to Wallet, and in the process, when they turned on Google Wallet, um, which is actually a really cool feature, yeah. um, it I I turned it on and I said, uh, oh by the way, uh, when you open it, it has um, a pin. When it unlocks Google Wallet, you actually have the ability to add payment cards and I have a, a Google prepaid card and they uh, right here just add a card and that's it now I'm linked into Google somebody gets into my Google account ta-da they have access to my to that whatever credit card I put in there mm-hmm. this is what we have to deal with this is the internet protect your neck and don't distrust that you you know be afraid of the internet. Just be wary. Keep an eye right. out. You know, in the long run. All right. Um, so let's go. Let's go to the more positive news. We got a car on Mars. We did. Hell yeah! yeah. We got in, a car in maybe on Mars. the coolest way possible. Give me a joystick. What was, it was a. It was a. A sky. A sky. Uh, drop sky crane. crane. Sky crane or something. Yeah, sky what? crane. Yeah, what zero. If zero got it right, it's actually the second car that we've gotten on Mars. Yes, but so now we can race. Yes. <laughs> well, here's here's what it comes down to. No, 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 no. <laughs> the size difference between the rovers and this is insane. It's a one the, ton car, right? It's a one ton car. We put a mini on Mars. <laughs> but the problem did. is, it doesn't weigh a ton on Mars. It doesn't. <laughs> no, no. It, it didn't weigh a ton on the way there or on Mars, but on Earth, that thing weighs a ton. <laughs> Legitimately one ton. 
Um, I have a roundtable question for you guys. Okay. Sorg. Yes. AJ. Yeah. Frank. Yeah. What would you give to have half hour with the joystick to that car? Oh, my God. (laughs) I wouldn't. You you don't want control of that car? No, be, I, I don't. Because be number the, one, I have I don't want to be the guy who broke the car. <laughs> it's three hundred million miles away that nobody can fix. I don't want to be that guy. Okay, number one. Number two, the lag. Okay, listen, we get mad when there's like the slightest millisecond of lag playing Call of Duty. It's a fourteen minute round trip signal. You make one move. It takes seven minutes to get there and seven minutes for you to get the reply that the instruction has been received and executed. 14 minutes. That's the worst lag ever. <laughs> but it's on yeah. Mars. Well, yeah, what do you I, expect? Like, I'd want to like, wanna, like, give it like a little tap to the <laughs> left and then like wait 15 minutes, like get a sandwich or something, and then come back <laughs> and then see that the wheels have turned slightly and have moved in a different direction. That's it. That's all. Hey, Sorg, yes. I just sent you a picture of what I would look like with my half hour of driving the Mars rover. Okay, so you can on. go ahead bring that up. Hold on, I'll get you that. I'll get you that. And oh, you'd look I like know this how guy. This, would end. this guy right here. That's me with the Mars rover. <laughs> I That's would be a, uh, it'd be crashing into, into a pile of rocks. So, like, here's the cool thing about the sky crane. So they, they realized that when they were going to land this object, which is the biggest thing they've ever landed on. Actually, I think the Mariner probes were big, too. Or the Viking probes. Vikings with the bars. Mariners I'm, trying to find, I'm trying to find a video of this. I saw a really cool video of this. Um, yeah, seven minute, uh, uh, go on YouTube and look up Seven Minutes of Terror is what the, <laughs> well, the one I saw the other day. As ridiculous as it sounds, they, somebody made one called Seven Minutes of Terror, and they have uh, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory engineers explaining the process. So it, this, this device, as it's flying through the atmosphere, has a heat shield that's pushing away all, that's absorbing and deflecting all of the heat. Go. Once it got through the atmosphere, it just deploys the heat shield. Sh- it, it rids itself of the heat shield. And then it f- deploys a parachute that is the biggest and strongest parachute we've ever made in the history of mankind that has to slow down a one-ton object falling from the sky <laughs> at like 2,000 miles an hour. It was, it, I think the force was like 600 Gs. Yeah, because you get one shot at that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, don't, you don't get to try that again. No. And you don't, you don't, get, you don't get practice run. Nope. You, you don't... I mean, you can use a computer simulation and hope that it's right, but ultimately, right. you get one shot to drop yep. that one-ton expensive piece of equipment on a planet that takes. It, it, it takes. It, you get one shot. Yeah, and even <laughs> even more. Like they were talking about, they missed they, in the article. They were talking about they missed a uh, uh, one chance because uh, they had to wait till till Mars is closer in the solar system. <laughs> Like when it lines up, which takes like I think it said like twenty six months or something like that. Yeah. Um, so here here's a video if you're if you're following us on here again, seven minutes of terror uh, on YouTube. <laughs> like you said, there's a big parachute, a supersonic parachute. I think the largest supersonic parachute they said at one point here. Yes. Um, and then, so then the, it slows it down. Mm-hmm. Then to two hundred like, miles oh, an hour. Parachute. Yeah, the par- to 200 miles an hour. The parachute won't stop it all the way. It won't land it safely. So they did what sci-fi nerds would do. They fire reverse thrusters. <laughs> they cut the parachute loose and immediately fire a set of thrusters that they then land with, like a Harrier jump jet. But then they realize that once they get too close to the ground, the thrusters will dry up, will pull up too much dust. Mm-hmm. So they drop it via crane via a thruster platform. That's the coolest idea ever. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, ever. And they lower it down, and then they realize that, okay, well, we can't lower it all the way down via the crane. So they cut it like 
a foot above the ground, and then they turn on the overdrivers of the thrusters to launch it away so that the thruster thing doesn't come down on top of the rover. Yeah, it's because it's going to crash regardless. And they just right. they just shove it like a few miles away so right. it doesn't damage the, the actual... So, sorry, in the, in the document, right below that is a link to a Wired.com article of a picture... From the uh, Mars that is currently trying to map all of the surface, and you can see the debris. <laughs> they kind of left a trail. So you can see the parachute and the back shell that, that was on the parachute. Oh, and you got to give me a minute because I, I turned on two step uh, authentication on Google, and now uh, I have to log back into my Google Docs. Oh, great. We've been laptop. there an hour, and we've already trashed the place. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Um, so they have, uh, the sky crane is, uh, off to the Northwest, uh, in a, in a black, uh, just smashed up area. The heat shield is off to the Southeast as it was removed and, but still continued moving. And then the Rover is on the ground, like kind of in the middle, by the way, I'm not going to lie. Got a little dusty in my in my hotel room when I was watching the video of them saying "touchdown confirmed" and everybody cheering. Got real oh, yeah. dusty in this. Oh yeah, that was great. That was That's awesome. because you're a nerd. That was a big yes. nerd moment right there. And yeah, there's a, there's a picture of where everything landed. You see the sky crane is the top one. The MSL. I don't care who you are. If you're a nerd, you get excited when we put shit in space. Yep. And you want to go to space. It makes up for being filled with two two weeks of the uh, biggest jocks on the planet over exactly. in uh, London, right? I mean, granted, right. <laughs> I mean, we're all watching the Olympics or watched some of the Olympics, but screw that. We put a car on Mars. Yeah, we landed a small car on Mars. By the way, hey, Europeans, how's it feel? <laughs> How'd that Beagle Rover work out? Ooh, that one hurt. Oh, what, what happened with the Beagle Rover? Oh, the Beagle Rover was the one that was following uh, Spirit and Opportunity, which are the previous two Mars rovers, which, by the way, are still going uh, what is it, uh, somewhere along the lines of seven and a half years after their expected lifetime was over. They oh, were wow. supposed to be there for three months and die. They're now going on their eighth year. Anyways, the Beagle rover was the one following them from the European Space Agency. And it got to Mars, and they tried to land it, and failed. And it just crashed and burned somewhere on the planet. They don't I, know where. I guarantee you, the guy in charge of putting the, uh, the, the car on Mars <clears throat> was an expert in claw machines. <laughs> 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 That's a good point. Like that guy. Yeah, yeah, who wrote a claw machine. <laughs> that guy is le legally not allowed to win prizes at claw machines anymore because. He just won the greatest <laughs> claw machine prize ever. Yeah. He got to put he a car on there. Yeah, by the way. Like, I want, I, want that, I want that picture, though. I want, like, that guy just, like, with his arms crossed like this. And then right below it, just, like, cut. And then below it just the Toy Story three-eyed aliens. <laughs> just going, ooh. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> All right. Oh, then, uh, no, they speak it up. Let's mention the Olympics here uh, before we get out of here. Still going. Still, everybody's bitching about uh, how their coverage is over that. there. You know what but, starts uh, in two weeks? What starts in two weeks? Or No, next week. What? Little League World Series. Little League World Series? Greatest sporting. I saw your on tweet earlier. What was it? The one team had like nine people on the team. Yeah, there's a team. There's a team from uh, <laughs> from South Texas that has three bats and three batting helmets for the entire team, and they have enough players to fill a team, and they made it to the uh, the playoff That's system. Awesome. Sounds like Yin's team. Exactly, and the sad thing is. Every group of these kids could crush Yin's team. Oh, yeah. In a heartbeat. Uh, AJ, AJ, I think you put this Olympic story in here. Yes. So, you know how everybody is uh, complaining about the Olympics and their coverage and, oh, tape delay is dumb. We, uh, tape delay is awful. Blah, 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 blah. Um, NBC has their highest ratings ever. Ever. Sorry. Ever, 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 ever. ever. 
Um, the uh, NBCOlympics.com yeah. in the first week, 1.1 billion page views. Billion. So they're not perfect, but I mean, I think I think a lot of this, because I, I remember the last, well, I hardly remember the last time the Olympics were around because I completely ignored it. Well, it was also in China. So they yeah. kind of have to take it because it was 12 hours. Yeah, different. yeah. So, I mean, that made sense. So I, I guess... Uh, but still, people are seeing it in prime time, going to the website. It, it sounds like their live extra thing's really working out. And you really can't complain too much because most people have cable. Most people have a plan with MSNBC and CNBC. So most people do have access to that ability to watch it online. So the, the, the website's numbers make sense. Um, and is it just the web? Or is it the ratings as well? Uh, well, they, they did a Pew survey. Mm-hmm. Uh, which normally is used for um, much more important things than did you like this, the 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 uh, uh, coverage? Uh, but the Pew survey shows that twenty nine percent of Americans believe the coverage has been excellent. Forty seven percent say it's been good. So seventy three percent are okay with it. That's good. That's good. So, I, and it really, I think it's down to like the people on Twitter are the most vocal. So right. that's what we're hearing is the people complaining about it. the people that are like, those are the people noticing them messing up the tape delay spoilers, you know, on Twitter. Those are the people that, you know, maybe, you know, were a little offended by some of the commentary during the opening ceremony about technology and other things that they just completely got wrong and sound like morons. You know? Oh, and by the way, let's let's all be real honest here. Mm -hmm. Everybody keeps talking about. Oh well, it's Twitter. And it's young people, and sixty-six mm -mm. percent no, no. of eighteen to twenty-nope year olds are watching it on TV. I'm sorry. What was that again? We we lost you. So I don't know what NBC. Sixty-six percent of eighteen to twenty-nine year olds are watching the Olympics on TV, not online. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would, at, at this point, I'm. I mean, they're more likely to follow it on social networking sites. Thirty-one percent follow. It on yeah. social networking sites blowing away everybody else by far. But when, I'm looking at it this way. You can watch the event live, and that's fine. Right? But there are a number of people who are at work who don't have time to sit at your computer and watch the events live all day. And that's the majority. That's the majority. I kind of like the fact that NBC cuts it all up and I don't have to watch four hours of gymnastics to get to the good parts. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It, it, it's care. a nice attention, uh, attention deficit, you know, kind of thing, you know, because it's the like, people, oh, the next person's up already. That was quick. Um, well, the people, the, the other thing is that you have the, um, all of the, you know, everybody keeps complaining about how there's commercials and it's tape delayed and it's all cut up and edited and it's edited to make everything seem more dramatic. Mm -hmm. Great. If you want to watch it live, NBC has every single one of the events streaming live online, provided you have a paid cable subscription. Oh, and, and some people are having problems with the app. It has been a little janky over over the last week and a half. So, but, but, but still, I'll be ideally... Honest, guess what? Hmm. That didn't happen in 2008. Yeah, at all. At, at all. all. You had to wait until NBC fed you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, even in um, the last Winter Olympics was the first one where we got this, where they had to verify that you... Had a cable provider, um, and 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 you know, and they started something along these lines, but definitely nothing as extensive as what they've done this year. You know, and granted, there's things that have gone wrong. There's problems with the technology, um, but we'll see what happens in four years. You know, we'll see what happens in two years with the Winter Olympics to a to a bigger degree, because the, the, it's just going to be a step improvement from what they learned from this one. So. They, they only get to iterate every two years, so it's going to be a slow process. Um, but I don't know. I okay. think it's all right. Uh, sure. oh, yay Olympics. So, oh, we just lost the... Uh, there's a problem with AJ's call. That's a good point to end it then. Uh, Frank Chinoa yeah. is at Insert Coin to begin. You can check him out if you're here live with us. Oh, AJ's calling back. Immediately following this show. Immediately following this show is Let's Play of Insert Coin to begin. Com. Anything else you want to plug out there, buddy? Uh, no, that's it. All right. <laughs> AJ's back to that's give us a send-off. That's all we do. AJ's the IT dude at virtualpotholes.com, at AJ Kuftik, online, on Twitters. Can you hear me? He can't hear me. Okay. 
But I do actually, I do have uh, something a little more specific to plug. Okay. If you've been having a bad day, if you're feeling down. Go to insertcointobegin.com right now. And let Sammy Davis Jr. heal you. What? <laughs> You're going to have to go check that out to find out what that's about. There's a picture right there if you're on video. AJ, you're back with us. Yes, I am. Uh, AJ Koptik, virtualpotholes.com. That is correct. Uh, I was going to blog about the security of stuff today, but then um, I, I just said it out loud here. There you um, go. But yeah, uh, check me out there, virtualpotholes.com. Uh, I, I am because Rob is now, so I get to, present, I get to promote my company, Vero. Uh, for all of your cloud needs in the southeast, vero.com. Go check us out. Uh, we will be around your area now. Actually, they'll be here in Asheville tomorrow uh, doing some lunch and learns on uh, virtual desktops on Cisco's UCS platform. How do you spell that? Vero, V-A-R-R-O-W.com. Oh, man. Um, they uh, were doing big things in the southeast. Com. They are handling it. Handling it. Handling business. And by the way, uh, coming soon uh, in March of next year is uh, Vero Madness, which is our uh, little fun conference that we do on the first day of the March Madness tournament, uh, where we uh, do demos, presentations, all sorts of fun stuff, and then we all go watch basketball. So there you go. Come hang out with. Them. Also, Chachi of Insert Coin. Oh, that, that, we had it right. There we go. Insert Coin to Begin dot com at Chachi says on your twitters on twitters. Follow me, I'll follow you back. He's also on Unsung. New episode coming up this Monday at PittsburghOnVideo.org. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Depends on how the rain turns <laughs> out. <laughs> exactly. And maybe I won't want to do it. Maybe, maybe I'll go on strike. I will. Okay. Can I um, do that? And I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron.com. Mike Sorg.com. Yes, you follow are. me at Sorgatron to find out everything else going on at SorgatronMedia.com. Follow the newsletter where I give a social media tip every weekend. We get updates on what's going on on Insert Coin to begin uh, all the social, uh, yeah, all the podcasts, I'm sorry, and everything else going on, including teaching dates. Um, so go check that out at SorgatronMedia.com and click on the newsletter button. Uh, hey, we're at AwesomeCast.com, at AwesomeCast on Twitter. Contact at, awesome, as, blah, blah, blah. T- contact at AwesomeCast.com for the email. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Please conversate with us. Hashtag AC113 for this episode. Thank you. You have, for our awesome chat room, who's been with us all night, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome.